On Acoustic Tuesday episode number 80, you're gonna get to know a previous Acoustic Tuesday artist a little bit better, learn about a new internal guitar microphone, and hear an Acoustic Tuesday viewer's musical creation. All that and more right after this. If you believe that playing acoustic guitar is about sharing the joy of music with friends and family, not just mastering the technical side of playing, then this show is your dream come true. Every Tuesday morning, I give you my list of exciting guitar geek discoveries, gear, and new music so you can stay inspired to live your best acoustic life. I'm Tony Castro, and this is the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Guitar geeks, unite. Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 80. This is the show where you're gonna learn about acoustic guitar gear, discover acoustic artists, and get inspired to live your very best acoustic life. As with all episodes of Acoustic Tuesday, I'm gonna share with you my guitar geek list for the week. And let me tell you, this week, I just have to say this list is exceptional. So I wanna dive right in. And I wanna, I wanna share with you an acoustic guitar internal, let me, let, me, let me phrase this the correct way, an internal microphone for an acoustic guitar. A couple months back, uh, right at the end of 2018, this company reached out and said, hey, we'd love for you to try this product. We'd love for you to review it if you like it. And I said, well, okay, I love reviewing new stuff. I had never heard of this product before. And I thought, this is a really cool concept. So what is this product you're asking? Well, it is the NV Tone Duo Model internal guitar microphone. And I gotta tell you, I'm super impressed. I have never really been a fan of internal guitar microphones. I understand their uses and I, and I think for, if, if they're paired with the right player in the right situation, they really do sound great. But I generally feel that the microphones inside a guitar can sound boxy and not be an accurate representation of the guitar itself. However, what I've discovered with the NV Tone is that it's actually a great representation of the guitar. It's fairly transparent. It picks up body noise, uh, as with most internal guitar microphones, but what I'm most impressed with is this little number right here, the DI that it comes with. Now I'm keeping this plugged in because if I pull it out, it's gonna pop my ampl amplifier back here. But this is an uh, aer aerospace grade, aerospace grade, did I, did I say that right? Yeah, aerospace grade aluminum DI. And you'd think, okay, cool, well it comes with a DI, that's neat. This DI is rechargeable. So check this out. All you have to do to charge this thing up, now it has a 16 hour battery life, and all you have to do is use this USB cable, plug it into your computer, and it charges it. There's a little LED indicator on the front that'll say, hey, yep, this is green, it's ready to go, and that'll give you 16 hours of battery life, as I mentioned. Now, it has two inputs, one for the microphone, which is included with the NV Tone Duo model, and one for a line source. Think uh, under saddle pickup or some sort of transducer pickup, another pickup source on the guitar. So you're probably wondering, well, what does this thing sound like? Okay, well, let's, let's give it a shot, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and press on on the DI, and that'll illuminate the DI, and you can kind of hear my voice talking through the internal mic, but. It's a pretty good sounding di uh, microphone DI combo. Now check this out. I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna strum the guitar again. Pretty good sounding guitar. You'll learn more about this a little bit later. I'm gonna turn the DI on again. I mean, it's a pretty decent sounding DI. Decent is actually not a really good word for it. I think it's exceptional sounding. In fact, I was uh, I was pretty excited to install it and give it and put it through its paces. Uh, it took me a second to install it. I, it's, it's it has been a long time since I've installed a, a pickup inside a guitar and. Uh, it, taking the end pin hole and extending it or enlarging it to fit a pickup jack was, you know, I was sweating a little bit, but I got it in. The installation was actually super easy. Aside from actually making the end pin hole larger, uh, installation was super easy. In fact, I wanna show you how easy it is. There's a video that they made, doesn't even have words, it's that easy. So let's have a look and then I'll tell you some more thoughts on the uh, NV Tone Duo.
as you saw, the installation is actually pretty easy. There's a piece of dual lock, which is a 3M product. Think of it as a, a super heavy duty Velcro that sits on the back of your guitar. And then there's a, another piece of dual lock around the microphone that just kind of secures it in place. Uh, the gooseneck part of the mic, the kind of stem, if you will, is bendable. So you can actually mess with it and find the spot for the best tone for your guitar, which I really like. Um, and I also want to say that you know, this is aside from the pickup itself. I think the DI is fantastic, easy to use. Uh, it's not something I would want to set on the floor, even though it's made like a tank. Uh, I'm just scared that the knobs would get damaged. So I would like to put this next to the soundboard if I was playing a gig with it or something like that. Uh, but I love the dual source DI factor. I love the ease of use and the internal microphone. But one thing that's totally aside from those two things is the packaging itself. Um, it's very uh, Apple-like. It's very, um, you know, iPad, iPod like, and this is real weird, but the packaging smells really good. I don't know if it's the ink that they use or the box or the foam or something, but it's, it smells really good. So kudos for packaging, I guess as well. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, just please go to acousticlife.tv forward slash AT80. In fact, you can get all the show notes, all the links for this episode of Acoustic Tuesday at acousticlife.tv forward slash AT80. Now I want to move right along because we've got an important order of business. And that of course is Guitar Geek Trivia. Here is your question for the day. Who served as Muddy Waters' best man in the marriage ceremony to his second wife, Marva Jean Brooks? Was it A, Jeff Beck, B, Eric Clapton, C, B.B. King, or D, Johnny Winter? Go ahead and ponder that, and at the end of the show, I will be sure to give you the answer. Now, before we go any further, I do have to make sure that you are aware that there is somebody behind the curtain, behind the scenes, switching gears, turning cogs, making sure all the machines are running in order so that we can bring Acoustic Tuesday to you. And that is, of course, none other than Sir Noah Jacob Heckman Jr., the first captain, engineer, and master mechanic. Tony. <laughs> Noah, how are you? I'm fantastic. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Good, and, good. And a good morning or good afternoon or even evening uh, to all Acoustic Tuesday viewers out there. <laughs> did you have yourself a good weekend, Noah? I did. Good. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, I had a good weekend. Good, I, good. I, I chuckle because you made me mad this weekend and <laughs> we were talking about it this morning and it's like if... <laughs> yeah. If we if we ever thought that we were brother like before, after this weekend, it's it's solidified. I was given Noah a hard time this weekend. Yes, you and were. I, and I gave him mad. I made him mad. You I gave didn't... me a hard time because yeah. we tried uh one of those pre order at the grocery stores and then I, you know, rolled up in the parking lot and they come out and load it up for you what you ordered and all that stuff. It was fantastic. <laughs> and you just gave me a hard time for it. I did. But the funny thing is is I asked him to tell me how it went. And then when he proceeded to give me the full report of how it went, I proceeded to give him a really hard time. Yeah. And then I felt bad about it. <laughs> but, you know, this is brotherly love. What can I say? What can you say? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thanks for asking. No, I had a great weekend as well. Um, Did I, I ask actually, you? No, you didn't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I actually spent some time with the Envy Tone pickup, uh, and I'm super pumped about it. In fact, I was telling Noah when I got into the uh, studio this morning, I was like, it's the first time in a long time I've actually installed an end pin jack into a guitar that hasn't been uh, uh, fitted for an end pin jack. So I was a little nervous, and I did it on a vintage guitar, which was uh, doubly nervous. But I, it was a small win for me, and we'll get to small wins later. So I just kind of uh, stoked the small win fire, if you will. That's good. But I also want to visit the mailbag, Noah, because some really great stuff came in. Okay. Uh, as a guitar geek, you know, the best thing about shopping uh, online is that you can order something on Friday from the studio and then forget that you ordered it over the weekend and then when Monday comes it's just here it's just waiting for you it's like Christmas uh, so I ordered some strings and things kind of like when you order groceries online and then it's there ready for you <laughs> and it's easy I'm assuming it's a similar feeling I'm assuming it's similar uh, I got some new uh, aluminum bronze strings from Ernie Ball to put on my Thompson Dread I found that that's that is the guitar that, that, or those are the strings rather that match that guitar. And I also decided, you know, I'm gonna try out these GHS vintage bronze strings. So I ordered two sets of those because they looked cool. And I thought I should give those a shot. I also ordered uh, a separate Humiditrack device 
for uh, another guitar case. I'm gonna try using the Humiditrack device without Humidipax. So I'm gonna use a standard damp it and a standard uh, sponge case humidifier to see how it stacks up against the Humidipax. See if there's any advantages or disadvantages. So this is kind of part of an experiment. I'm excited about that. And this is something I'm really excited about. So Loudon at the NAMM show, I believe, just announced that they are making strings now. And these strings uh, cost me a lot of money. <laughs> they were 25 bucks a set. Oh, okay. uh, so I'm excited to put these through their paces and uh, share with you all what my experience is. Uh, I have high expectations. What, real quick, what's the 1213 thing? Oh, we just have a, a standard light gauge okay. and then a standard medium gauge. But what intrigued me, now I, I really had a hard time ordering these, not because of the price, although that did have me pause a little bit. Um, but they have uh, specific sets for dad gad. They have a specific medium light set. Uh, so I was like, oh, I, I kind of want to order all these. But then I thought, you know, for comparison's sake, I'll do a standard set of mediums and a standard set of lights. Uh, so I'm excited. I'm excited to dig into those and uh, again, share with you all what my experience was with them. Also, we heard from Acoustic Tuesday viewer and Tony's Acoustic Challenge member, Tim K. And Tim K wrote us a nice note. He said, Dear Tony, Noah, and Levi, I'm coming up on my one year TAC anniversary with the TAC community and thought I'd send you a note to thank you for such a great first year. Thanks for all you do in organizing all the lessons, monthly events, and of course, Acoustic Tuesday. I feel I'm learning something new every week. Thank you again. And then he goes on to say, I, I want to share this because it's just guitar geeky and I love it. Uh, the TAC community is honestly one of the best, most supportive groups I've ever been a part of. If I have a question, there's always someone who can offer me some thoughts on it. Uh, with the feelings of support, I've not held back from posting frequently in the open mic forum and have even built up confidence to share my first few original songs. The TAC family has been very encouraging and I can't wait to write more songs and continue to learn more about guitar. Man, thanks for taking the time to write this, Tim. This is this is so awesome. And this is Tim K from Kitchener, Ontario. Uh, and he says, I've enclosed a couple of musical thank yous for you guys at TAC headquarters. An LP of one of my favorite artists, Craig Cardiff, and that is this right here. He says, his live shows are always great, and if you ever get a chance to hear him when he tours in the US, I'd highly recommend it. His live shows are full of warm, open-hearted music, and he always shares hilarious stories, and the audience always has a great time. He's recently been featured on the soundtrack for the show, This Is Us. And then next, uh, he says, a CD of another favorite Canadian artist named Harry Manx. He's steeped in bluesy goodness, and his songwriting is great. While he'll play guitar and banjo and his shows, the most in his shows, the most interesting instrument he plays is called the Mohan Veena that he learned to play in India while living there something like 10 years. While not featured on the CD, a song called Crazy Love, the version with lyrics features the Mohan Veena. This version of the song from a live show in Sydney features the instrument prominently. Harry brings this Eastern influence into his songwriting and his style, sometimes referred to as Mississippi Blues. Uh, featuring either of these artists on Acoustic Tuesday show would be great, as I think the audience would hear something a bit new and different. Last but not least, I'm looking forward to meeting you all, you and the fellow TAC members in June at the Acoustic Live Festival in Bozeman. Can hardly wait. Sincerely, Tim K. So I want to thank Tim K for uh, taking the time out to write such an awesome letter and share some new music with us and, of course, you all as well. Uh, Noah, should we move on? Yeah. I'm excited about this next feature. Yeah. I really oh, am. Yeah. I really am because this, speaking of Acoustic Tuesday viewers and speaking of uh, Tony's Acoustic Challenge members, this next artist is both of those. And a jamboree attendee. And a jamboree attendee mm -hmm. and a hell of a songwriter mm -hmm. and a hell of a singer. And she plays banjo. A hell of a mom. She plays she plays guitar. We can't say enough good things about this this next artist because she is indeed a dear friend of ours. And I am speaking about none other than Maggie Pope. Maggie Pope is a dear friend of mine and Noah and Levi. And she's an amazing singer-songwriter. And what I love about Maggie is the fact that she has this, she's she's living her best acoustic life, in my opinion, because she balances having a very large family, making sure all the kids are going in the right directions, and then also on the side is playing shows and writing songs and recording her own music. In fact, we're gonna listen to some here. Uh, I'm gonna start featuring uh, her band, Under the Oak. Now, Under the Oak, I believe it was last year, maybe about a year and a half ago, they released their first album entitled Big Sky on Winding Way Records, and I want to share with you a tune off of that album called Bring Me a Carpenter. This is, of course, brought to you by Maggie's Pen. And this is, again, off of the Under the Oak album, Big Sky. Let's, so let's have a listen. Bring me a carpenter, wise and strong. 
to pick up my pieces and mend what is wrong. So that was Bring Me a Carpenter by uh, by Under the Oak. I almost said by Big Sky. Um, and Under the Oak is a band. Uh, there's four folks in the band, of course, Maggie on vocals, guitar, and banjo. We've got Adam Monaco on mandolin, guitar, and vocals. Uh, Chris Peace on bass and guitar, as well as Peter Oswald on cello. Pretty awesome combination of musicians. Now, I also want to mention that Maggie has just released a solo EP. Uh, five songs that she recorded, and this recording has an awesome story. I won't get into all the details of it, but I will just say this. This solo EP was recorded in a closet. I'll, I'll explain a little bit more. Uh, Maggie actually recorded this. She felt the inspiration. She went ahead and went into one of the larger closets in her house. Not that her house is made up of large closets, but one of the larger closets that you could fit a guitar and a person into. And she did this because her kids were sleeping and she didn't want to wake them up. She recorded these songs that came out so great. She thought, you know what? I'm just going to put this out. And she did, and it came out awesome. So let's feature, uh, let's listen to the ballad of Anna Lee off of Maggie's solo EP entitled June Tapes. I heard bells, heaven's bells for thee. music from one of our very own Acoustic Tuesday viewers. Again, I'm so pumped to be featuring Maggie because as a dear friend and as an awesome musician, I wanted to share her music with you all here on Acoustic Tuesday. Uh, you can learn more about Maggie and of course Under the Oak at AcousticLife.tv forward slash AT80. All the show notes will be there uh, so you can click away, buy the albums, check out the albums, listen, learn more, and it'll be just a... Uh, It'll be a very informative experience. Let's just put it that way, because I was running out of words. Uh, <laughs> Noah, uh, I want to visit you right now. Okay. I'm going to visit you right now, and I'm going to ask you, I want to request that you please share some small wins. Can you do that? I paused there, because I, for a moment, I thought about denying you your request. <laughs> but then I thought, I could never do that. Um, Sorry. It's, it's a thing. Sorry. Acoustic Tuesday without small wins is like Acoustic Tuesday without guitars. It's like it's like washing your clothes and not drying them. That's what it's like. <laughs> let's do miserable. Some, let's do some small ones. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Here we go. Small wins from Acoustic Tuesday viewers, just like yourself, those of you out there watching right now. So if you haven't shared a small win, think about it. Tony will say more upon that later. Okay. <laughs> First one comes from James M. Small win. I just finished replacing my son's saddle and nut to bone on his old Ibanez acoustic guitar. Nice. This is my second time doing this, and I'm getting the knack of it. I'm glad That's I can awesome. do something for my son. That's also, cool. Fam Jam coming up when, uh, when he comes to get it. Awesome. That's stellar. And next one comes from uh, Ste Stephane B., uh, I think is a regular Acoustic Tuesday viewer now. I believe and Tony's Acoustic Challenge member as well. Yes, correct. Thank you. Uh, small win, a really huge win actually. Bought a new GS Mini Mahogany with my Christmas gift cards at my favorite guitar shop. Nice. Uh, Long and McQuaid. McQuaid? Long and McQuaid, yeah. It's a Canadian McQuaid. store. This is the guitar that I will be bringing to the Acoustic Life Festival Rialto experience. <laughs> nice. To the pleasure of meeting you. Uh, buying June... By June? Yeah. Playing June? To the pleasure of meeting you. Maybe maybe that was a typo? I don't know. Looking, for, <laughs> looking forward to meeting you, too. <laughs> okay. Um, see, this is real, folks. I this don't, is... I don't, I don't pre-read it all. <laughs> I just see a small win and just pull it over. I'm going to read it no matter what. 
okay. uh, and our last small win for today um, comes from Eric G. He says, small win or recurrent wins. I And you have to help me out here, Tony. He says, okay. I am Francophone, and I live in the city of Quebec. Whenever I watch your show, I realize that I understand absolutely everything. Uh, maybe another definition of a Francophone guitar geek. Thanks for the quality, Eric. Awesome. I don't. I've never heard of that term. Me neither. So, but I'm assuming it has something to do with hearing. Yeah, right? phone, 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 right? Like yeah, phonograph. Yes. Huh. Francophone. Maybe another definition of a francophone guitar geek. So maybe he's German. Frankfurter. A phone. No. I, I'm maybe gonna I have stop. to. De- I'm going to have to defer <laughs> to our our much more knowledgeable viewers. And so if you know what a, a francophone is, please let us know in the comments below. And that's our small wins for today, Tony. Well, Noah, thank you for sharing. I want, Can I share a small win? I know I kind of already shared a small win. Yeah. But this one really relates to guitar playing. It's kind of a mindset thing. Uh, this weekend, it's not going to seem like it relates to guitar, but I promise it does. This weekend, I was so excited because I got a chance to play in a hockey tournament this weekend here in town. And it was... Um, it was great. It was, I played five games in three days, constant hockey, and I'm a very competitive person, as Noah can attest to. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's And I can admirable. be kind of intense when it comes to sports or anything involving competition. Uh, but this weekend, I had a blast playing hockey. I didn't really care about the score. Uh, I was just enjoying my team and just playing hockey with a bunch of good friends. And I thought, man, this is just a direct parallel to what Acoustic Tuesday does and what how, how we should approach our guitar playing as guitar geeks. I want you to approach your guitar playing as in just having fun, getting a chance, like sitting there with your guitar and before you start playing, thinking, man, I have a chance, I have an opportunity to play with my guitar today. I have an opportunity to play my guitar. I have an opportunity to learn something new. I have an opportunity to enjoy my guitar. So I thought that was a pretty striking uh, realization uh, for me in in the sports realm, but I thought, man, that's a direct parallel to uh, to playing guitar as well. So I just wanted to share that. I thought that was a great small win. Kind it of is. living in my brain over the weekend. Uh, but of course, if you have a small win that you wish to share on Acoustic Tuesday, please do it. It's super easy. Just put hashtag small win and go ahead and type it in the comments. We love to share those small wins on Acoustic Tuesday because those small wins help spread and, and help foster this positive momentum that we all need on our guitar journey. We all need to feel that positivity. We all need to feel that progress and small wins do just that. So please share those in the comments below. Uh, I want to keep rolling. This We've got a cool, actually we got a fun game that we're going to play here in a second. And we also have a, a, a new segment on Acoustic Tuesday, one that I want you to participate in. Uh, so we'll get to those segments here in a second, but this is also a new segment. I, I'm not realizing that this is, this is a milestone episode. This Number is, 80. This is just a fun show. Yeah, it is. I mean, this is, this is a lot of newness, a lot of newness happening. Well, this next segment here, uh, you guys may have remembered back... In episode number 72, we featured Michael Beauchamp and Laurel Primo. Now, if those names don't sound familiar, it's okay, because they go by the name of Red Tail Ring. Awesome folk duo, and just a uh, just a just kind of one of those duos that you just can't stop listening to. Uh, between the harmonies, the instrumentation, the songwriting, it's just beautiful. It's a beautiful, happy duo of folkness. Uh, anyways... Um, well, we reached out to them because we wanted to learn more about them, and they sent us a video back. And I got to tell you, they answered three awesome questions. And I think I think you're going to find when you're watching this video, their answer to the question, "What piece of gear changed your acoustic life?" is going to expand your mind. So, without further ado, let me reintroduce to you Red Tail Ring, and I want to thank them for asking three of our acoustic life questions. Answering. Answer, they answer the questions. Yeah. We asked, they answered. Correct. Yeah, that's okay, what I said. Okay. Is that what I said? I think you said they a- asked three questions. They answered I'm three sorry. of our questions. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's just get to them. Let's get to them. Hi, Tony. This is Michael and Laurel from Red Tail Ring, and we're here to answer three acoustic life questions. First off, thanks so much for nailing our last names. It's surprisingly rare. Um, But yeah, Primo and Beauchamp, we welcome you into the uh, French-Canadian heritage circle. Question number one, who is our favorite under-the-radar artist? And hands down, it's our fellow Michigander, May Erlewine. 
uh, she's really well known in Michigan, but we just want to uh, tell more people about her because she, we think she's so amazing. She's a great songwriter. She's really prolific. And uh, the way that she writes songs makes the listener just feel uh, like... Like both seen, but forced to face yourself, too. Yeah. Something like that. Thanks. We love collaborating with her and hearing her. So her name is May Erlewine, E-R-L-E-W-I-N-E. Uh, question number two, what's your favorite acoustic and why? Mm. For me, it's a very easy answer. Uh, this is my Martin D18 Golden Era. Uh, this one's from 2009, and I bought it new, and so over the years, of course, it's changed and opened up. Uh, it has a really nice, round, low end, uh, as you might expect from a Dreadnought, uh, but great sustain. It plays really well up the neck, and um, it's been an amazing companion for me over these years. When I'm on acoustic guitar, I usually play in a finger style. style. Uh, and lately I've been playing on this little Waterloo guitar. This is their model based after the old Stella's. Mm. And for me, it's just perfect. Uh, it's the shorter scale, so it's a little looser, and it has the ladder bracing inside. So for my work, um, I, I couldn't ask for a more perfect little friend. Question number three, what's one piece of gear that's changed our acoustic life? I think for us, both in this last year, it's simply been the choice to play on other axes than our main instruments. Um, I know talking with Michael, uh, writing on a smaller acoustic guitar has kind of encouraged you to not play automatically, to really think about what you're doing because yeah. it's a different sound that's coming out Absolutely. instead of it's on your dreadnought. Mm -hmm. For me, I've kind of had a related experience getting back into electric guitar this year. It's helped me uh, just by hearing what I do on that instrument with that sustain has helped open my eyes to the things I've been doing all along on fiddle and banjo. And it's created a really great feedback loop that's clarified my identity on both electric and acoustic instruments. So. I guess we just encourage you to try different things that's than what's normal for you to to help raise it all up. Thanks once again for covering Red Tail Ring, and uh, we look forward to uh, talking with you in the future. Thanks. All right, I want to thank Michael and Laura for take. I want to thank Michael and Laurel for taking the time uh, to make that video for us. I, I also want to comment on. His D18 Golden Air, I think, sounds awesome. And also, it's Laurel's fault that I now am lusting after uh, a Waterloo Stella. Uh, yeah. She, as soon as she showed that guitar, it was a 12 fret, a lot of headstock. I was like, ah, I don't need another reason to love that guitar. Well, Which, so, yeah. You know, I just... Well, some more context. See, when you start to say something like that... Yeah. Already I get rifling through my head, like, 10 other items that you are wanting so so it's like a slot machine i'm just waiting for which one is he gonna say now that's gonna pop up well that one wasn't really on my radar i mean it was i'd seen it but then to know that she's like yeah i like this for finger style is like really sealed the deal for me so i'm gonna start looking at those anyways i'll move on now yeah. <laughs> uh quick reminder this is a courtesy reminder for all of you guitar geeks out there who are so focused on acoustic tuesday so focused on playing guitar don't forget march 10th is daylight savings time we have to spring forward for those of you who, who do this silly thing where we switch the time to make ourselves feel different for like a week. We'll feel bit poor for a week, and then we're like, oh, yeah, this is the new normal. Mm -hmm. And then right when you get used to it, bam, we're going to switch it back. I don't know. It has something to do with farming daylight, saving daylight. Mm -hmm. We're not really saving any daylight. Not it's in the Arizona. same amount of daylight. The time is just different. Right. It's, it's the same. It doesn't matter what time it is. It's not that hard. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Real quick before we keep moving on, I just want to let you know that Acoustic Tuesday is brought to you by Tony's Acoustic Challenge. Tony's Acoustic Challenge is a place for guitar geeks. So if you're watching Acoustic Tuesday and you're like, I'm a guitar geek, I love celebrating small wins, I want to encourage you to check out Tony's Acoustic Challenge. It's an acoustic guitar program like you've never seen before. Please go to Tony'sAcousticChallenge.com to learn more about it. And if it resonates with you, I want you to request your invite today. 
I also want to ask you to leave a comment. We want to know how you feel about the show so far today. Do you like the new segments? Are you excited about the new segment coming up? Please leave a comment below. And while you're at it, ask yourself a very important question. Hey, have I subscribed to the Acoustic Life YouTube channel? Because if the answer is no, you just take two seconds and do it. I think it actually takes one second. Just click that red uh, subscribe button and then go ahead and click that gray bell. That'll give you a notification of each and every new video that gets released so you don't miss out on any of the Guitar Geek fun. Now, Noah, speaking of comments, yes, I know that you You've pretty much spent the weekend while you were waiting for those groceries to be delivered into your car. Oh, I think no. you were on the phone looking at comments. Correction. I was not waiting. It was so fast. <laughs> I pulled up and it was it was amazing. It was it, it has revolutionized. It will revolutionize my family life. Well, you do have quite the army of uh, kids. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming going to the grocery store is much different for me as it is for you. Because you probably need like a fleet of those like those car carts, you know? They like they put the car. <laughs> I use like the limo. It's like one. a racetrack. <laughs> either that, yeah, either that or the stretch limo one. It takes you like you got blinkers to make a right turn through the. <laughs> You're happy about that. It's like one. a party bus. The kids so, are hanging out the window. So Tony, I'm gonna give Sorry. some shout outs to yeah. those who have tuned in on recent <laughs> AT episodes. And share some comments. Uh, you can you can laugh over there. So just a shout out to Ben and Lou Bear, Woody, uh, Buck, Don, John, Sharon, Cheryl, Brian, uh, White Hawk Vision Films. Hey, Mark uh, with a C. Uh, yeah, Florian, and many many more. A lot of animals in there. <laughs> Bear, Buck, White Hawk. Okay. I need to stay focused. Okay, he, I'm you, sorry. he does this, folks. I know. And I gotta, I gotta crack the whip a little bit. <laughs> so Buck says, your lesson on drop D tuning uh, got me thinking about what melody I use to tune my guitar. While I use a tuner or the fretting method to tune, I automatically follow the low E string tuning with the rolling notes from the intro of "Come as You Are." Oh, nice. To check the sound. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I don't know if I have ever really done that myself like done a melody line or a riff to gauge the the tuning but that's that's a cool that's approach. a great tip yeah I, that's awesome thanks for sharing that uh another next comment comes from shrestha shrestha b uh just says i love to listen to tony and your teaching style is awesome uh acoustic tuesdays are so much fun keep up the good work oh thanks for watching appreciate it and last comment comes from steven b says great show but you're making me fill my years. I remember when Ovation came out with the, uh, is it Paizo or Paizo pickup? I think it's both. I've heard Paizo, like Larry DiMarzio, who lives in town, owner of DiMarzio pickups, he says Paizo, and I'm like, oh, he, he owns a pickup company. He clearly knows. Right. But then I've also heard Piezo. Right, okay. So you know what? There tomato, tomato. Okay. So I rem he says he remembers when the Paizo, Paizo, Piezo, Paizo, <laughs> Pick up, came out, and then he says, and Noah is younger than my oldest son. Oh. Okay. But still enjoy every week, and he is tuning in from Brazoria, Texas. Awesome. Thanks for tuning in. And there's our comments for today, Tony. Well, thank you, Noah. I appreciate you sharing those with us. Yes, yeah, very magnanimous of me. It is. I really Because I don't have to. No. Did you have a game that you wanted to play with us? Hmm? You were talking. You were t telling me something earlier. Oh, about a. Uh... Well, it's only fair, right? Fair is fair. And so, a couple episodes back, uh, Tony had this great idea, uh, based on comments that have come in about uh, lookalikes, right? So w what you know, somebody said I look like you know somebody or whatever. Happens. See, you, you th no, I think you think it's more infrequent than it is. It's every single video. Oh, there's okay. a there's a Noah looks like. You know, Jimmy Neutron. Yeah. No. <laughs> that was your comment. I had one person say Jimmy Neutron. That was you. But anyway, so, okay, fine. So it's a little more common than I think it is. But Tony gets this as well. And so it's only fair that since we've done my lookalike and you, the viewer, have spoken on that, now it's time for Tony. It's Tony's turn uh, to gather those comments and show some pictures of uh, what viewers have said Tony who Tony looks like. So, without further ado, let's jump in, Tony. Uh, I'm ready. All right. 
So the first one up is Ashton Kutcher, <laughs> right? I could say, and I, I have to agree. Back there, there was a time where you were clean shaven, uh huh, and that was the thought. It was like, wow, you look like a clean shaven. You look very much like this huh. this man. Okay, so that's the first one, and the next one up is David Gilmore. I've heard that one a lot, actually. It's I could see that for sure. I've heard that one like an old David, not not a, sorry, a young David Gilmore. Yes, yes. I meant old, like you know, back in the old days. Like. And I have to agree, that's a pretty good one for sure. I would take that. Okay. That would be awesome. Um, now this one, of course, so I hear this one, and I have to do my little smirky thing. Uh, Jason Momoa. <laughs> Okay. I think I'd have to hit the gym if I yeah. if I want to be like him. So I know my kids know much more about this than I do, but Tony, um, Jason is what is he an Avenger or something? He's an now? Aquaman. He's a, he's Cal Dra- Cal Drago Drogo from Game of Thrones. Oh, he's Aquaman. Okay, and I have. I would like to meet Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa, if you're a, an Acoustic Tuesday watcher, which I hope you are, because I know for a fact you're a guitar geek. Because I talked to Matt at Mule Guitars, Mule Rezafana Guitars, mm-hmm. and he actually got a really cool. Uh, Jason Momoa got a pink Mule Caster, oh. which is uh, the Mule Rezafana guitar. It's a metal Telecaster, and he actually put Matt in a in a scene. So Matt from Mule Rezafana Guitars got to die in a scene. In one of Jason Momoa's productions. I forget what it was. Some Dude, Civil War something or other? Tony, you what? should not have said that, and that should have been one of your trivia. Ah! Oh! See, but you ruined it. Well, I, I could, you know, it could be an Easter egg for other people. Later. But but I want to say this. Jason Momoa, if you're a guitar geek and you're watching Acoustic Tuesday, I want to die in a production. <laughs> Only in a production, though. Yeah. I mean, I could be like a, a what are the, what are the, what's Call Drogo the leader of? But he was the... The uh, Rackies. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I obviously wouldn't be able to go play in games, Game of Thrones, but, you know, I'm, I'm other stuff I could yeah. do. I have a beard. He's, he's Danny's sun, moon, and stars. I could play, I could play his brother if, <laughs> if y'all think I look like okay. <laughs> Let's. Shall we keep going? Yeah, we, yeah, we can. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to save what I think to be the best two to, for the last, but so... Now, let me say this real quick. So we took a couple pictures of you, Tony, just to kind of do a comparison. Yeah. So here was Jason Momoa's picture that we pulled, and here's a picture of you kind of doing a similar See the similar resemblance? Pose. See, you can definitely see the resemblance. I this need is, you all to vote for that. This is I, like the before and after pictures I, of the gym. <laughs> here's before Jason goes to the gym. And then here's after. Okay. Was I the after? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now, this this one has probably come in more frequently than the others, actually, surprisingly. And viewers will not be surprised. Post Malone. I'm surprised by that. I Yeah. I, I see why... Okay, we've had this conversation before. Yeah. I see why you're surprised, but I also see why folks see a resemblance. Okay. okay. That's all I'm going to say. That's fair. So there you go. Um, he, you know, he did play, you know, props to Post Malone because he did play, I believe he played a J200 on the Grammys. Cool. Which I thought was cool. All right. Yeah. Okay, now we're getting to the last two. Um, now, I don't know who originally said this, but it's brilliant. And it is the Geico Caveman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh-huh. It's so good. <laughs> so good. The Geico Caveman, clearly. That's the winner. Um, and thanks, then last, thanks for that, Noah. And then last but not least, which I also think is a very great suggestion of who Tony looks like, and that is none other than Russia's most infamous monk-slash-magician-slash-mystery man, and that is Rasputin. Rasputin. I mean, it wasn't he, he was, like, real tough, wasn't he? <laughs> Yeah, he he just wouldn't die. He wouldn't die. Like they didn't they poison him? Yeah, or something like yeah. a million times. Yeah, I'm and making it up. I don't. Very interesting story. <laughs> I, I could talk hours on that. But anyway, and I'm showing the picture that we took also. Oh, and, and good. I, and good. I made it black and white. You did. I did. So, <laughs> so 
there you go, Tony. There are Tony's lookalikes. And just like last time, we would ask you viewers at home and abroad, uh, tell us what you think. Uh, which one of these do you think Tony resembles the most? Or is there somebody else we might have missed? Uh, we want to know, and we're very interested. And that's the game, Tony. <laughs> game over. Okay. Well, no, I can't thank you enough for your your excellent um, hosting of that, that game show. Oh, I felt like I was just blabbering all over the It place. was great. You, it, you really, it, it had great dynamics. The ebb and flow was fantastic. Oh, so. And, and I just really appreciate it. You're welcome. But I'm not going to let you off the hook yet. Okay. Because I'm going to ask you one more question. I know sometimes we ask for, you know, you're a guitar geek whens. Yes. I, I didn't ask you before we filmed this, but do, do you have any of those today? We do. Oh, fantastic. Please share. Okay. I will share those. And we definitely will have some because uh, I saved some from last time as well. Oh, that's So right. now we're starting to build up a little cash. Um, okay. So I got three of them for you today. First one comes from Brian H. You know your guitar geek when you, you don't mind driving an hour to a job site on your day off because you know it's right around the corner from a local music store with 36,000 square foot of space where you can spend hours browsing and playing. That's a good job site. And that's Brian from <laughs> Westminster, Maryland. Nice. Uh, next one comes from KJ Gas, uh, which I'm guessing is a reference to guitar acquisition syndrome. Um, gas. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Says another good show, guys. Here's one. You might be a guitar geek when you're watching TV with your wife. When you're watching TV with your wife, you're holding your acoustic guitar and your hands on the neck and you're just kind of mindlessly rubbing the finish with your thumb. And then you turn around and your wife is giving you a look like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, like, just love it on your guitar. <clears throat> if I kept a tally of the "you gotta be kidding me" looks that I get from Whitney, uh huh, it's so frequent. It's just, I mean, I would need pages upon pages of tally paper. Okay. Because you know. Yeah, I know. Uh, I don't know what to say. You don't have to say anything. <laughs> and our last one for today comes from James M. He says, "You know." You're a guitar geek when you move to a bigger house just so that you can have more room for guitars. Accurate for statement. More guitars. If I didn't have the studio, I'd have to move. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, your guitar geek when for today. Thank you, Noah. I appreciate it. And of course, if you're watching Acoustic Tuesday and you think I've got the most brilliant, you know, you're a guitar geek when, please put that in the comments below. Hashtag, you know, you're a guitar geek when, and go ahead and finish that statement. One more thing before we move on to the pinnacle of guitar geekdom, please, please, please share the show with your guitar geek friends. The whole point of Acoustic Tuesday is to get guitar geeks to unite every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time, and you are a part of that mission. So please share this show with your guitar geek friends. Send them to AcousticLife.tv. Send them to this YouTube channel. I'll encourage them to watch on Tuesdays and participate in the guitar geekiness that is Acoustic Tuesday. All right, speaking of the pinnacle of guitar geekdom, now we still have a new segment to get to, but we're not quite there yet because I've got two guitar signals that are stellar. So I want to share these with you. These are from our very own Acoustic Tuesday viewers. <clears throat> the first one comes from Frank R. from Kings Park, Long Island, New York. Frank submitted his guitar arsenal and he says this about his guitar arsenal. Hey guys, here's my guitar arsenal. Love the show, I watch it every week. I wanted to submit earlier, but as you can see, it's a bit of a procedure taking them all out at once and of course I can't put them away without having to play each and every one before packing them up. My wife knew I had a lot of guitars, but didn't realize the extent until she saw them all together. Of course she asked me, how many guitars do you need? And you guessed it, my answer was, wait for it, one more. So here is what's in Frank's guitar arsenal. Top row, left to right, we've got a Martin DMCE, an Epiphone Hummingbird Pro, a Cameo, an Epiphany EJ200 SCE, a 1969 Guild D25, and a Zager Z50CE. Bottom row, left to right, we've got a Fender Squire Stratocaster, an Ovation Tangent, a Rogue Lap Guitar, an Ovation Legend, an Ovation 1656 12 string, an Ovation Applause hiding behind the Les Paul, a Gibson Les Paul Custom, a Yamaha FX335C, a D'Angelico Premier SS, and an Epiphone P93, and then front row, front and center, nice and comfy, are Cassie and Ben. And I have a question for Frank, and how the hell did you get those two dogs to sit there so like photogenic and still? Because I know for sure, if my if I went to take a picture of my dogs in front of my guitars, it'd be just a nightmare. They'd be all over the place. So kudos to you, Frank. Thank you for submitting your guitar signal. Next up, we've got Justin C. from Houston, Texas. 
and he went a little bit. Uh, he, he went across. He went a different direction on this one. Mm -hmm. So instead of left to right, we're gonna go right to left. Okay. So in Justin's guitar arsenal, we've got the following: a 1995 Taylor 510E that got a midlife rejuvenation in 2017 and now has the ES2 pickup. A 2006 Squire Baby Strat, a 2007 Brian Setzer Signature Nashville Dretch a 1950s era playtime archtop guitar that was rescued from Bizarre Guitar in Reno in 1994, a 2018 Vizcaya Spanish guitar purchased in Costa Rica during a recent trip, a 1990 Rickenbacker 360, a 2016 Stratocaster, which is a 60s reissue, a 2012 Custom Rising Sun Telecaster built in Japan during my tour at US Embassy, a 2001, this one is extra cool by the way, a custom Red Griffin built by the Blue Guitar in San Diego as a gift following my tour as commanding officer of Navy Squadron VS-38 Fighting Red Griffins. The design is from our squadron patch. No knobs to clutter the body, it is always at full volume. And I'm sure the neighbors appreciate that as well. And last but certainly not least, a 2012 Luna ukulele. So I wanna thank Frank and Justin for submitting their guitar arsenal. And if you wanna share a guitar arsenal that you have, your guitar arsenal, it can be big, it can be small, it could be somewhere in between. We wanna see it because you're a guitar geek and we want you to join the Guitar Geek family. So please submit your guitar arsenal, it's super easy. First and foremost, you gotta order yourself a guitar arsenal shirt. There's a link right beneath this episode here on YouTube. When you get that guitar arsenal shirt, go ahead and go ahead and do step two, and that is take a picture with you amongst your guitars with that guitar arsenal shirt on. And last but certainly not least, the most important, please submit it at acousticlife.tv. When you go to that website, there's a, uh, a link right in the top menu that says submit, click that, you can add your picture and a description of your guitar arsenal for us all to see and a feature on a future acoustic Tuesday episode <sighs> felt like an auctioneer <clears throat> and it felt like there was a lot of saliva building up in my mouth like I felt like it, pretty soon it was just gonna be like <laughs> like a fire hose like you feel like it's so noticeable you have to like mention it no like I just I wanted to I wanted to share with everybody because yeah I feel like my s's started to turn into like <sighs> as we went on so I thought well if they noticed I need to clarify yeah that's not so bad it's when that bubble creates itself in your throat and then your voice you starts talk, going yeah you kind talk. of starts going like this tony <laughs> that is the truest statement that has ever been spoken on acoustic tuesday thank you thank you very much it's like, uh anyways well we have a new segment that i want to introduce to you we get questions all the time on the Acoustic Tuesday show in the comments below. We thought, man, you know, cause I go through those comments and I, I like to answer them. I like to engage with all the Acoustic Tuesday viewers and some great questions. So that being the case, we wanted to develop a new segment and we wanted to call it Tone Talk. And we wanted to take some of those very questions from the comments in the Acoustic Tuesday show mm -hmm. and to just address them live here and now. Well, yep. live, I mean, kind of live. Yeah. We just wanted to address them here and now. This is the, hey, just cut me some slack. This is the first time we're doing this segment. Yeah. <laughs> so let's just jump in and do it. Go for it. Now, Noah's, Noah's promised me that he's giving me a time limit because I tend to be long-winded. Yeah. He's exaggerating. Yeah. So let me just say this. I'm going to give you no more than a minute to respond to each question. And then I'll even give you a little, like, like a wrap maybe, up. Yeah. Like okay. maybe 20 seconds before the minute. Okay. Okay. So first question. I have not read these questions yet. So for this first segment of Tone Talk. First question comes from Patrick M. And he says, has anyone played or have you played with Santa Cruz strings and open G or other down tunings? If so, will that affect the tone? Because the string itself will be at a lower tension for three of the six strings. That's an awesome question. So one of the reasons I like the Santa Cruz parabolic tension strings is for the very question that you asked. So I choose the mid tension strings and by tuning them down, they're still able to retain uh, uh, good tension, good good hand feel, but actually still produce good volume. So I wouldn't so much go on a lower tuning with the low tension strings, but the mid tension strings are fantastic for that. So absolutely give them a shot. I think you'll be delighted in the result. <laughs> Boom, Whoa. you didn't even give me a wrap up. Great job, Tony. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, moving on. Next question comes from Mickey Yu. Guys, I am on the fence about getting the Taylor 324 CE guitar. Do you have any advice for me? Absolutely. Uh, this is a great guitar because I think for those that maybe feel like Taylor has a little bit of a brittle tone, maybe a little bit of a, a high-end uh, treble focus tone. The 324 is a great model because we've got a Cipelli, uh, solid Sapelli top, a solid Sapelli back and sides, 
that mellows it out consider a considerable amount. Uh, so you get a little bit more warmth, you get a little bit more bass body out of the instrument. Now that being said, I would recommend anybody that's shopping for a guitar, regardless of the model, please try it yourself. Uh, the best thing you can do is try it, you know, run through the songs you know, run through the licks that you know, and play it because what might work for somebody might not work for somebody else. So the best thing I can say is to just go ahead and try it in person, put it through its paces, and see if you truly like the guitar. Man, huh? Pretty right. good, huh, okay. Noah? All right. <laughs> this is great. Um, <clears throat> next question uh, comes from William T. What is the best way for a visually impaired or even blind person to tune a guitar on their own? This is a great question. Um, well, they're all, they're all great questions, but this one in particular, I used to actually teach uh, somebody here in town from Big Timber who was a visually impaired person playing the dobro. And we had the same thing because everybody has these clip-on tuners. Or you have a tuner, you sit in front of the guitar, you play, this, you play the string and you see where the gauge goes, boom, you tune it up. Well, if you're visually impaired or blind, you can't see the tuner. So the best thing I would say is to utilize one of the most, uh, uh, I was gonna call it an ancient device for tuning, a tuning fork. Get yourself a low E tuning fork and use that to actually tune your guitar or any sort of uh, uh, reference pitch. There's a lot of times you can you can get things uh, that will, you just press a button and it will throw out a reference pitch like an A440 or something like that. So you can tune your A string and then tune all the other strings relative to that or of course the tuning fork. So tuning fork or a reference pitch would be perfect. All right, well done, Tony. Thanks. I was really pushing it on that one. <laughs> All right, we got, a, we got a couple more. Okay. All right, uh, next question comes from Howard T, who says, I have a real problem with performance anxiety. Mm -hmm. I do well when I'm alone, uh, but when I get around others, something happens. Any advice for me? Absolutely. This is uh, very common. First, I will say this. This is very common. So if you feel like, oh my gosh, I, I just literally lost control of my hands and my knees are shaking when I'm trying to play for somebody else, you are absolutely not alone. So don't feel like you're, you know, you're fighting this battle, you know, solo. So what you can do and what has helped me in the past is just playing around people. Okay, this is key, we get the grammar right here. Playing around people is different than playing for people. Okay, and I used to do this uh, when I was living at home in the basement. I was going to community college. I did it. Um, but I would play around people. So like if my mom was cooking dinner, I'd sit in the living room and I would play. Or if I had friends over, I would just play on the couch while they were around. They weren't sitting there listening to me. They were just around. And that's a great stepping stone. Furthermore, if you find somebody that you can play with, that will help as well. That's another stepping stone. So play around people, start playing with somebody else with a guitar, and then move to that next stage, which is playing for people. Um, and that could be, you know, family and friends. It doesn't have to be an open mic. You don't have to surge to the open mic. It could be family and friends. It could be family reunion, and then maybe an open mic or something like that. But take baby steps. Don't, don't try and go zero to 60. Take steps in between. That'll kind of work you up to um, easing those stage fright, that anxiety that builds up. Fenrir asks, Tony, what's your favorite bourbon whiskey? Oh, I'm going to give you three because I'm going to give you three. Uh, <laughs> Booker's is my top's number one favorite. It is an unfiltered bourbon. They do quarterly releases that are different uh, and they all taste just amazing. So if I was on a desert island, it would be Booker's hands down without a doubt. Next is uh, Basil Hayden's, one of my other favorites. Uh, super smooth, almost vanilla-y. And then last but certainly not least is Blanton's. So the three B's, Booker's, Basil Hayden's, and Blanton's. Uh, Blanton's is a, a beautifully um, spicy bourbon, but a little bit more mellow than Booker's. In fact, Booker's and Blanton's come from the same distillery. Um, and Blanton's just has a cool bottle. Booker's also has a cool bottle. Basil Hayden's reminds me of the Old West. So aesthetically, mm -hmm. they're great. Taste, they're awesome as well. All right. And the last one for today, Tony, uh, this one has come in several times from many different folks spread throughout many different Acoustic Tuesdays. And the question is specifically, Tony, what's your guitar arsenal? Ah. Now, now, I know we've talked about this. Yeah, yeah. And we know that it would take a bit. If we were to go, if we were to go through <laughs> your entire guitar arsenal, so instead of doing that, is there just one that you could choose uh, from your guitar arsenal today 
to tell the folks about? Absolutely. In fact, it was the one that I just installed the Envy Tone pickup on. Now, before I get into that guitar, I will say this. I like the idea of this Tone Talk segment, but just because I like it doesn't mean we should include it in the show all the time. So if you all dig it, uh, who are watching Acoustic Tuesday, you think, man, this, this Tone Talk section is kind of rad. Um, well, all we need from you is to leave a comment below and let us know what you think about the Tone Talk segment. Or if you have a question, put hashtag Tone Talk and go ahead and ask that question. And if we continue doing the Tone Talk section, I think what would be rad is because we have gotten this guitar signal question often, is to feature one guitar out of my guitar signal to kind of conclude the Tone Talk segment. So uh, the guitar I picked today is a 1946 0017 from Martin. Now this is very much a player's grade guitar. Uh, all solid mahogany, solid mahogany on the top, the back, the sides. Um, this guitar has been refinished. This guitar has been refinished in something that, I don't know, the finish is really thick, whoever refinished it. Uh, they did an okay job, but I, I would have rather have stuck to the old finish. Um, why did I buy this guitar? Plain and simple, it was a stellar deal. I think I paid, I wanna say I paid $1,200 for this guitar. I, I'm not gonna shout prices on all my guitars, but this one was one of those ones where I saw it in the store, I looked at the tag, 1946, okay, cool. I looked at the serial number, I said, okay, cool, 1946. Um, what's going on? Well, the inside's entirely spray painted black. Somebody had in, literally spray painted the entire inside black. Um, <laughs> The refinish is is not great. The tuners are uh, shaller tuners that are not the original, but they're pretty obnoxious and gross. Um, but the tone is fantastic. So this is a guitar that I, I kind of bought on a whim and I've been really pleased with it. It's a guitar that I like to go to to kind of practice my luthier chops, my armchair luthier chops, uh, because it's in kind of disrepair. Uh, it's playable, but it has some things on it that I'm not super thrilled about, but it plays great. It's set up fantastic. It sounds awesome. It's the only double O I have in my collection right now. And um, I dig it. So it was a good deal and it turned out to be a pretty darn awesome guitar. So that's just one of my guitars. So that's a, a 1946 Martin 0017. I actually picked that up here in town. So there we go, Noah. First we got the talk. first one under our belt, Boom. the Tone Talk. So again, please let us know what you think about the Tone Talk segment. If you want us to continue it, please let us know. And of course, if you have a question to seed the Tone Talk segment, we would certainly appreciate that as well. Just, just preface it with a hashtag Tone Talk and then go ahead and ask your question. Well, Noah, we're, we're closing in. We're sure closing are. in. The finish line is in sight, but we have one more important order of business. And that is, of course, Guitar Geek Trivia. So just to remind you, here was your question. Who served as Muddy Waters' best man in the marriage ceremony to his second wife, Marva Jean Brooks? Was it A, Jeff Beck, B, Eric Clapton, C, B.B. King, or D, Johnny Winter? Well, if you answered B, Eric Clapton, you're absolutely correct. As you can tell, I've been on the Muddy Waters kick lately. But uh, B, Eric Clapton is the correct answer. Eric Clapton served as Muddy's best man at his wedding ceremony in 1979. Muddy Waters' longtime wife, Geneva, a first cousin of R.L. Burnside, passed away of cancer on March 15, 1973. Years later, he traveled to Florida and met his future wife, 19-year-old Marva Jean Brooks, whom he nicknamed Sunshine. Now check this out. Also of note and very much related, Muddy's last public performance took place when he sat in with Eric Clapton's band at a concert in Florida in the summer of 1982. All right, Noah. We've hydrated Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 80. We've given it all of its pre-race food. The starting pistol went off. Acoustic Tuesday, episode 80, raced to the finish. It broke the tape and is now standing on the awards podium in first place. Okay. Being, <laughs> being awarded the gold. Being awarded the gold. All right. For uh, Guitar Geek awesomeness. That was good. So let's take a sneak peek into next week to see what's going to happen on Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 81. Next week on Acoustic Tuesday, Martin's newly redesigned strings, a series of must-try tonal experiments on a budget, and you're going to get to hear a turbo guitar geek who also makes beautiful music. That's all going to happen next week on Acoustic Tuesday. We encourage you to join us. Of course, Acoustic Tuesday airs 
every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time here on YouTube. And of course, if you missed an episode or you want to catch up, please visit AcousticLife.tv where you can catch up on any past episodes and of course get the all-important show notes which contain extra links and all sorts of guitar geek goodness. We want to thank you for sharing your time with us today. We want to thank you for being a guitar, guitar geek. We want to thank you for just being plain awesome and supporting the Guitar Geek mission that we try and spread every single Tuesday on Acoustic Tuesday. So with that, we're going to wish you the best week possible and we're going to remind you that guitar geeks need to unite. I almost said reunite. <laughs> so with that, cheers to you all. Guitar geeks unite. Have a great week and we'll see you next Tuesday on Acoustic Tuesday. Bye.